it's Tammy with Real Southern Woman. Hope you're having a blessed Monday. It is Monday, and Mondays can be very tiring because lots of times we get up after being home on Sunday. And we have all of our chores to do, all of our ducks, put all our ducks in a row, and so I'm no different than anybody else. I'm tired tonight, but we all need to hear from God and each other, right? So, um, we have a wonderful Bible study tonight. It is called Forgive Freely. It is under the August the 5th uh, Bible reading in the Charles Stanley book, Jesus, Our Perfect Hope. And so, um, it is a beautiful reading, and I wanted to read it to you guys tonight. Chris is on his way home. I just touched base with him. He's in Opelika. So, and that was about 15 minutes ago. So hopefully he'll be here, I'm hoping by midnight at least, probably 11-ish. So I'm excited about that. Um, I probably ought to be a good wife and go spruce up for him, right? <laughs> Even if we are getting old, we still need to show each other we love each other, don't we? Um, tonight's thing is August the 5th, and it's called Forgive Freely. And it says, Forgive us our sins. For we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. This is a good lesson for us tonight. It is a lesson to teach us how to forgive others. Um, it's a lesson that will help us do a checkup on our hearts and attitudes and minds towards other people or anybody in our past, or anybody in our in our present, if they've been bothering us, or they have bothered us, or for some reason we're not forgiving them the way we ought to, this lesson is a good one, okay? It says, can you imagine how horrible it would have been if, if, at salvation, God had stopped at a particular sin and said, no, this one isn't pardoned. This one's not pardoned. Because it's just too terrible. There is no way I can forgive that. That is one transgression. That one transgression would have kept you separated from him forever. Thankfully, the Lord did not do that to you. And he would not pick and choose which sins to forgive once you have repented. 1 John 1, 9 is referenced here. We're going to read that after we finish reading through here. So he's letting us know that after we have repented and asked God to forgive us, then he would never pick and choose a sin not to forgive us for. It says this is because at the cross, Jesus forgave all you've done, past, present, and future. And once you accept him as Savior, every transgression is pardoned. Now that's a big statement. That's a lot to think about. And if you've not thought about it, or if you're one that thinks if you sin, you still have to continually get forgiven for your sin. Um, I mean, it's good to always be clean and pure and ask God to forgive us of our sin. But you need to understand that Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus paid it all. Jesus did his father's work and it was finished. He sacrificed his life, his beautiful, precious blood for our sin. Our sins from yesterday, our sins from today, and our sin in the future. He did it. Okay? So don't think that you cannot be forgiven for anything you've done or for anything that you may do. Now, it doesn't mean that we can go out and sin freely because we are children of God. And in his word, he tells us plainly that we belong to him. We are part of the children and a family of God. And he will chastise us as children and keep us in line. So as a matter of fact, he actually gets on to you. And whips you into line a lot more once you're saved. So it doesn't give you a uh, a pardon to do anything you want. Okay? So it says, however, that is what you would do. 
Okay, and so it, this is uh, Charles saying that no, uh, God would have never said that a sin was too horrible to forgive. But he wants us to know that that is what we do when we, when we ourselves refuse to forgive others. He says that we put ourselves in God's place, but without his mercy and provision. And instead of releasing them completely as Jesus did for us, that we choose to hold on to our hurt, resentment, and hostility. He says, do not do that. It says, in everything you do, imitate Christ. Rid yourself of unforgiveness. Letting go of resentment, laying down your desires to get even, and allowing God to deal with the person who has hurt you. Choose forgiveness so you can be a disciple who both honors Jesus and draws others to him. He says at the end, Jesus, please forgive me for my bitterness and help me to forgive fully. Amen. Now, we're not Jesus Christ, and it's harder for us to love people with that pure agape love, forgive them freely as he's forgiven us, but we can, through his help, through the Holy Spirit, and through the work of Jesus in and through us. We can do that. We have overcome sin through Jesus Christ, and we can forgive other people. And we should. Absolutely we should. Um, if there's anybody in your life that you feel like you haven't forgiven, or anything that comes to mind at all when I'm talking about this, then get down on your knees tonight and ask God to forgive you for the bitterness that you have in your heart and help, ask him to help you have the faith that you need to trust him with the situation and he will do it. You know, there is a place, and I'm not trying to be ugly or not, but there is a place in the Bible that says, um, um, a vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. And I'm not saying we should all want to get back at people or anything like that when we're talking about forgiveness. But we need to trust God, that God is in control of the situation and that God can and does what needs to be done for the people that are good and the people that are bad and the people who have hurt us and the people who love us. We need to trust Him with everything. Okay? So I'm going to read out of 1 John chapter 1 verse 9 and this is coming um from an from a part in the bible that is called fellowship with him and one another okay and you know you can't have fellowship with each other unless you have forgiveness because no matter who we are and no matter what we are where we are in this life uh, we sin every day and we need forgiveness for a lot of things we say and do things we shouldn't do, just like somebody who has hurt us. So therefore, we need to make sure and forgive them uh, because we would want them to forgive us. It says, um, I'm going to start with verse seven, 8, okay? It says, and we are in 1 John, and that is in the, towards the back of the um, New Testament, not the front. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, but 1 John is towards the back, Okay. And it says, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So first of all, we need to acknowledge the fact that we do sin and see ourselves as sinners because if we can't do that, then there's no reason for Jesus Christ to have ever come here on this earth and died so that we could have a Savior, okay? So it's okay if we're guilty because we're all guilty. 
If you feel guilty today for something you've said or done, or if you feel guilty because you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your, as your Savior, that's perfectly fine. And it's okay to feel guilty. But if you do, then you need to get down on your knees and ask God to forgive you. Because he came here to forgive your sins. Okay? I hope you've enjoyed tonight's Bible lesson. I hope you're having a wonderful Monday. I enjoyed myself today. I got a lot done. I I, I got a lot of work done today. And, it was, and it's a good feeling when you're... Um, on a Monday night, and you feel like you've accomplished something. Because some days go by, and we just feel like we didn't get anything done. I know the last few days, let's see, what day was it? The day that I did the tomatoes, and I cooked, and I did all that stuff. The next day, and the next day, I wound up laying around, y'all. I'm like that. I have fibromyalgia, and I have some health issues. And I'll get to feeling really good, and when I do, I just go, 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 go. And then I'm just like... Not worth a flip for a few days. And then I rest up, and then I'm ready like the Energizer Bunny all over again. And that's just kind of how I work. So, sometimes you'll see me in the kitchen all day long, and then you might not see me for four days. And then you'll see me in the kitchen all day long again. But that's just how my body works at my age now. Um, I hope that all of you are praying for the families that have lost loved ones in those shootings. And um, I try not to get into politics on here. And if I, if I do, sometimes it offends people. But I will say that the main thing that we need in this country is God. Jesus Christ, love, forgiveness, peace comes from God. Okay? So we're never going to have peace on this earth until people get a hold to God. All right? You ain't got nothing to do with anything else. So, don't think for one minute that the devil doesn't have a hold on people who can take a gun and go into a place and kill other people. In my opinion, that is evil. It is pure evil. And so, we need God. We need Jesus Christ. It's not the guns. It's not whose side you're on, okay? It's the fact that we all need a Savior. That's what he came here to die for. People just like those two men who did what they did this week. Okay? I wish more than anything in this world that those men could have found Jesus before the devil got in their hearts enough to make them do something so ugly. And we should pray for their families because I'm sure they have family that love them and who are very upset over all of it too. But we should never forget to pray for people who are hurting, who are empty, who have the void in their heart that only Jesus can fill. And those two men are prime examples of that. We need to have more compassion and love for everybody, not just one person or a certain type of people, but all people. So when we go to bed tonight, let's just pray and thank God that we know Jesus Christ, that we have him living in our heart. Thanks to him, we have eternal life. Thanks to him, we have a God they love. And we should thank God that we are not lost and undone and thank him for our salvation, okay? I hope y'all have a blessed night. I hope you've enjoyed uh, the lesson and I hope to see you again tomorrow night. You know how it goes with me. If I'm on, I'm on. If I'm not, don't worry, okay? Let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you tonight so very much for your son, Jesus Christ who came down to this earth to show your love and to forgive us of our sin. We know because Adam sinned in that garden, we're all born sinners. And without you, we are all capable of doing bad things, terrible things, gut-wrenching, evil things. May we never forget that it's because of you 
that we are not in the same position that those guys were this week when they took the lives of other people. May we always know that we need you each and every day. We need you in and living through us, and we need to be in your word to be grounded and to have a hedge put around us so that we can withstand the temptations of the world. Be with us tonight as we go to bed. May we love each and every person around us if we for any reason haven't forgiven something or somebody or no matter what it is even if it's a thing in our life that we can't seem to rid of may we release ourselves from that negative energy and only think of you and trust in you through every situation in our life in christ's name we pray amen i hope y'all have a blessed night Chris started watching a show while he was gone, and so I have started watching it because he's watched five or six episodes, and so I've only watched two, and so I have to get caught up with him so that when he gets back home and he wants to watch an episode, I'm not behind, and I know this is a Bible study, but we do watch adult shows on TV. It's on Netflix. And um, so it's pretty interesting so far, and um, it's it's pretty crazy. But Chris likes crazy stuff. He's a man. He likes action-packed, adventure-type shows. So, but it does have some bad language and some ugly things, like most things on Netflix. Um, but I have to say, I I mean I do. I watch them. So. I, I don't know, some of y'all might think I'm terrible or not, but I'm an adult and I know how to filter it and um, do the right thing with my life. So I hope that if for some reason, you know, y'all are just perfect and never watch anything ugly, bless your hearts and more power to you. One day I might get there. <laughs> I hope y'all have a good night and I love you. Talk to you later. Bye.